All right. I thought this would be an interesting topic of conversation. So back when I used to drive a cab, I would get off work at 10 in the morning. I'd work 10 o'clock at night till 10 in the morning. And when my brother and I would get off work, we would go to various different places to try to get what would essentially be dinner for us. So it'd be lunchtime for other people, you know, like 11 o'clock in the morning. And for us, that'd be dinner. So we would get something to eat right before we went to bed. This particular morning, this was, hold on, I'll get you the exact date. This particular morning was October 5th, 2009. I remember it because my brother and I ended up going to this Publix Plaza that has got a few different restaurants in, in and amongst the plaza. Now, we were either going to Firehouse Subs or the Chinese restaurant right next door. Both are very good. They're both in this Publix Plaza that in Orlando is on Lake Underhill over near like Dean Road. It's not Dean Road. I forget the name of the road that's right next to it. But there's like a Walmart there and a Publix. And it's right on Lake Underhill on the east side of town. When we went in, first thing I noticed, sitting in this empty parking lot on, I think it might have been a Sunday morning because it was so dead, there was this red Shelby Mustang sitting there. And my interest was immediately peaked because I was like, that's a Shelby Mustang. Holy crap. And it looked like it had been sitting in a barn or something for the last decade. I was like, man, someone just unearthed this thing and brought it out. And I got out of the car and I went walking over to it. And the first thing I noticed was it had a Shelby badge that I'd never seen before. The side of the car said GT500 Shelby Europa. And I was like, whoa, what the hell is a Shelby Europa? I've never heard of a Shelby Europa. And I was like, it looks genuine. Like, it, just, it all looks like someone assembled this thing decades ago. You know, the everything had the same patina and the hood fit like it was factory. Like, I mean, everything, everything looked like it, was factory. I was like, man, that's amazing. So I took a picture of it. I wanted to try to get a video of it. When I went into the restaurant, I was like, I'll wait and I'll see the guy come out to the car. No sooner did I get in the restaurant than a guy came running out, jumped in the car, and drove off. And I never got to see another picture of it or get a video of it. When I got home, I started researching and I looked up what a GT500 Shelby Europa is. Now, what it turns out is this guy, and I forget his name, something foreign-sounding, Dupois or something, sounds like a French guy, he had approached Shelby, and Shelby had stopped production of the GT500 and the GT350s, and he had gone up to Shelby in 1971 and said, we want to get licensing from you to produce Shelby Mustangs in Europe because there's people who like those cars, but they can't get them in Europe and uh, Shelby was like sure now the problem is they didn't make very many originally they thought they made 14 turns out they made nine there were two convertibles and seven coupes the reason they didn't sell so very many is in 1971 as you all know there was the fuel shortage and there were there were other economic problems that were causing people to not buy fuel guzzling cars also the modern day equivalent would be about a hundred grand is what the cars go for somewhere in the low six figures based on inflation and all that because of like import taxes and everything else it was an extremely expensive car so only nine of them were sold in 1987 one car was stolen it was a red coupe and it's never been seen again and people in Europe have been looking for it ever since and I don't know if I'm sure I, somewhere along this I'll, I'll post a picture but we'll go ahead and what about right there go ahead and pop that back up there I saw a red GT500 Shelby Europa coupe that morning when I figured out that it was that it might be, I went back by there every morning around the same time for 
weeks or months on end trying to see it. I hung around that area just looking for that car to come back again. And I have, it's been a decade, almost to the day. In a couple weeks, it'll be a decade to the day. I have never again seen that car out, ever. I showed it to some friends, and some friends were like, maybe someone put a stripe kit on the car. And I was like, I mean, maybe, but who's ever heard of a GT500 Shelby Europa? And everything about that car looked old. It's not like it was recently done. Like, everything about it looked like it had been sitting in a barn for 10 or 15 years. It hasn't moved. So, I don't know. Maybe that's the stolen, you know, unbelievably rare one of seven Shelby Europas that have been lost. Maybe it's just someone who knew about it in the 90s and put a stripe kit on their car. I don't know. But, it's a little weird that I've never seen the thing again. Who knows? It's always made me curious. So there it is. Maybe that's the real Eleanor. Maybe it's nothing. But I've always wondered about it for the last decade or so. So there you have it. There's my true Eleanor story. So, you right. Give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, whatever. I'll tell you guys later. Love it. Ooh.